You know, feeding the 5,000, parting the Red Sea and turning water into wine are all very cool, but for real competitive action, you can't beat a round of golf. A game which allows business blokes everywhere to pretend they're getting exercise. We'll be abusing this monstrously fine contraption later on, and in the second half of the show, things get less than light as we feature one of the biggest games of the year, Mortal Kombat 3 on the PlayStation. But for now, let's gird our loins for today's news. Since our Tekken 2 event last week, arcades across the country have been heaving with copycats attempting to emulate the feats of our game crackers, but our guys are still the top. From playing Tekken a few times, so, um, I've actually discovered that you can actually get a hidden character. Um, you've got to press start three times and you've got to shift the joystick to the right and actually Bruce just appears. And the wimply named Bruce is so secret that even the Japanese don't know about him. So top work British cracking blokes. The Sony PlayStation, released last Friday, has quite literally been bought by a lot of people. And the pandemonium set to reach fever pitch tomorrow when the new Cookie Stroke Retro ad campaign invades our screens. Here's an exclusive peak type situation. Someone somewhere is trying to sell you PlayStation games on TV. Be a real sap and switch off now. Rejoice, punters! You can now throw your arms erotically around Games Master 24 hours a day with our new World Wide website, which goes online, oh, just about now. You can get pictures and video clips from each week's show, including extra info like how to pull off those Tekken 2 moves from last week. There's also major top game previews on all platforms type situations, up-to-date news on movies and technology, and a forum for your own views. As well as our website, you can dabble with our bulletin board on TVNet, where you can meet and chat with other people who don't get out much, and download demos of top PC games. To log on to TVNet, set your modem to 8 bits, no parity, one stop bit, and dial 0181 558 8937. This week's PC demo is the strategic shoot 'em up Worms. With a 14.4 modem, it should take about 15 minutes to download. Now you know. Time now to whack our balls in the general direction of fun as we tee off today's event, which we're calling Schwing. Always on the lookout for new tests to my contestants, I was particularly pleased when I stumbled across this little beauty in a local fish and chip shop, Smart Golf. Players use real clubs to hit a real ball against a massive touch-sensitive screen. Where the ball makes contact, a virtual ball takes over and flies according to how hard and in what direction the real ball was hit. It's just like real golf, except you don't need to wear silly clothes. Of the dozen courses on offer, I've chosen two holes from the testing British course, the Belfry and my contestant must par them both. Now, we've decided it's a bit easy to have sports blokes on actually playing their own sport. So for this golfing event, please welcome the greatest snooker player in the history of the Green Bays, the man who's won the world title a record 134 times, Stephen Henry. Yeah! Now, Stephen, basically, you're too good at snooker, right? No one in the world can beat you, but you do play golf as well, don't you? I play golf in the summer, yeah, when there's and no snooker. What's your handicap? Twelve. Twelve handicap. Have you ever thought of taking that up professionally? Oh, no, golf? no, no way. No, I'm not good enough. Not, not others, any other sports you just, you're going to try? Um, no, no, that's, uh, the, the snooker takes up all my time at the moment, and golf, as I say, I play in the summer when there's, there's no snooker. When you, when you are playing at the Crucible, I've often wondered, right, you're there, it's all very quiet, and everything when you go up to take your shots. Mm. What happens if you need to break wind? I just do it. 
he like kind of quite, quite a loose <laughs> quiet one then you kind of, you kind of let go there uh, how much money do you have as well? I've often oh, wondered. millions. You have positive oh, stuff, absolutely. don't you? <laughs> That's great, because most people come on and you ask them and they're all saying, oh, well, I don't get paid that much money, but you do. I am loaded. Tons. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. And uh, the final thing is, right, obviously, you exploded on the snooker scene. No one has been able to touch you for years. The question everyone wants to know is, when you're wearing the waistcoat and the nice tight black trousers, are you wearing a boxer or a pant underneath that? I never knew you noticed. What is the trousers were nice and tight. I've, I've seen a couple of lines there, Stephen, and I've often been intrigued. What do you wear underneath? Uh, I wear boxers myself. You wear a boxer yourself. Yeah. Is, that, is, that, is that a general thing within the snooker world? I don't know. You'd have to ask them. <laughs> you don't really we get don't get changed in front of each other. No, you don't. It's not that. It's, not, like that. it's not a big locker room atmosphere no. there. No, it's all individual. Yeah. Right, Stephen, then, if you'd like to follow me over to this unfeasibly large contraption we have, we'll get ready to start the challenge. And uh, let's go through these flowers first of all, because they're not nearly blokey enough. Uh, Rick Henderson for PC Review is joining me at the 19th hole. Rick, any tips for Stephen? Yeah, there's no wind. We're playing without wind on the holes, so from us, uh, obviously uh, a lot of hot air anyway. <laughs> um, and he's just got to keep it very straight and firm and true. Um, and also his putting. He said that his putting's not too great, so try and get to the green in two. Okay then, if Stephen has to take part in two holes, the 10th and the 18th, they're both par fours, so he has to get par or under to win the challenge, and obviously as you can see we are using the Game Boy version of the game. So uh, Stephen, if you'd like to select your club and tee off. Fine drive there, Stephen go for the five iron here, Rick, because it's quite a short hole. You can see now, how does that look, Rick? Well, Seve actually drove this entire hole. He did it during the uh, Ryder Cup. He did, and that is a 191-yard drive there. It's uh, the ball is still in play. That's a fine. That is almost perfect. Fine actually. first shot there from Stephen Henry. Okay, Stephen, if you'd like to, what club would you like for your second shot? The wedge, please. He's going for a wedge, Rick. He's he's done exactly what professionals would do. He stopped short of the water. And he's just taking that one. Let's see where's that going to go. A little bit of a hook there, oh, but it's all oh, nice carried shot. over beautifully placed on the green there. A fine second shot from Good. Stephen Hendry. Okay, so I imagine Stephen going to the putter yeah, now. Putter. That was a very, very good recovery shot there. But here we are. This is where we're going to test his putting skills. Well, he's he has got, got on, to do he has it gone to the green in two, Rick, like yeah. you recommended. He's got two to try it in. Okay, now the putting, he's actually moved on to the front part of the contraption, and that's because it's, uh, it's smoother and it's more representative of what the green is like. So he's five inches above the pin, 35 feet away, takes the putt. It's there. Oh, this looks good. You can oh. see it. It was the hole. Oh, just stops two inches short of the hole. What's going to happen now is the computer will assume that Stephen will make the hole in the next shot. It's going to give it to him. So at the end of the first hole, Stephen Hendry is still on par. Okay, so now we go into the second hole. It's the 18th at the Belfry, Rick, the toughest hole of the course. Why is it so difficult? There's a water trap just beyond the trees to the right. There's this huge water trap, and he's got to clear the water to actually get it in four, really. Okay. Um, and that is very difficult to do. Okay, thank you, Rick. Uh, what, what are you going for in this one, Stephen, first up? Driver. One more going for the driver. It's a much longer hole, hole here. Best of luck, then. Tee off the second hole. Stance. That's looking quite good. We can see it coming through on the screen. Where's it going to land? He's got to keep to the right of the water, but he I mean, I just has gone just that. into yep. the trees. He's in the trees. This is going to need another fantastic recovery shot from Stephen for the second stroke. And he's landed in the rough as well. So he's in the rough, so again, we'll bring another those little pad. Side. Now, is Stephen going for a wood from the rough here? It's quite a daring move, right? It is very daring. I would have liked to use a more lofted iron myself. Unfortunately, he's not got a tree in, in, in his view, so... Second shot then. Takes it, giving that an almighty whack. We can see it coming over. Is it going to make the fairway? It's, I think he's it's moving a bit. Oh! Clears the water, the water though. Just. Clears the water, and I think he's just on the edge of the green there. 59 yards from the pin. And a fine stance there from Stephen, actually. <laughs> his trousers were hanging very, very nice. well. <laughs> yeah. So it's those boxes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But so he's going to have to chip onto the green now. This, this means that his next shot will be a putt, and he's only got one, one to go for. So he is in, is in a sort of light rough there, yes, at the, at the edge of the green. So he needs a very accurate little dink shot here. Beautiful fluid movement there. 
And we can see it all, but it's stopped dead there. It's still quite far from the hole. So Stephen must sink this putt to win the challenge. It's a very tough one, Rick. It's a very difficult putt indeed. He's going to hit it uphill, so he's going to have to put some legs on it. And also it bears to the right. It goes from left, rolls from left to right, so he's going to have to slightly go to the left of the hole. OK, then, Stephen, let's go for it. Giving that a nice whack. He's hitting it on the left. Is it going to roll round? He's, no. he's got the legs. Oh, it's rolling on the cup of the hill, but it's stopped there. Eight tantalising feet from the hole. So Stephen Henry's challenge has ended unsuccessfully. Well, bad luck, Stephen. Uh, that's probably the only thing you haven't won uh, in your entire life. Good start with that first hole. No problems at all there for you? No, no. I played the first hole perfectly. And yeah. then what, what happened with the second one? I uh, just collapsed. The pressure got to me. It was, a, it was an enormously long putt. I know, and I uh, yeah, gave it a full shoulder turn and much too far. Yeah, that's it. Well, thanks very much for coming on, Stephen. Pleasure. Unfortunately, you don't get the joy, but best of luck with the rest of the season. And uh, how are you going to spend all that money? Is it possible for you to manage to spend the money? Um, you know? I'll try my best. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thanks very much, Stephen. Round of applause for our special guest and the richest bloke we've ever had on the show, Stephen Hendry. Cheers. Thanks, Stephen. <laughs> You're probably sitting at home now thinking, what a fantastic show. If they show a feature now, I'll completely fill my pants. Well, prepare to change that underwear because we have a top one. Did you get it? Well, did you? Did you? Well, of course. Now, what would a slumber party be without a totally illegal advanced copy of the yearbook? Yeah! Girls in video games are a bit like fat blokes and tight pants. The two just don't seem to go together. American Laser Games may change this though, with a new full motion video CD-ROM for ladies, Mackenzie and Cole. The player navigates around these video clips trying to get a date for the prom. That's a school's out go mental party to you and me. You gotta pick a really great guy, get to know him, fall in love, get married and live happily ever after. Okay, how about just get to know a really great guy by making the first move and letting love pave the way? Yeah. Great idea. So. Who's the lucky man? Okay, you've got thick bloke. Have you figured this out yet? Smooth bloke. Hey, I better get going. And geeky blokes. It's me, Gavin! Gavin Pepkis! And Farm Club! The footage for the game was shot not in Hollywood, but in some bloke's old shed. And hundreds of alternate scenes were shot, allowing the player to determine how the story turns out. No expense was spared to capture that top teenage atmosphere. Car parts were filled with sand to make glamorous scenes like this. Is this party awesome or what? You're next! Whoa. <laughs> All manner of obstacles crop up to follow your pursuit of your ideal date. And as usual with teenage girls, the telephone figures largely. Why don't you give me a call when you get off work? Can you help us out, Brian? Oh, I knew I could count on you, Carly. Thanks for calling to confirm. My parents won't let me go to the prom unless I find a date for Lars. I'll go with Lars. You've also got to deal with dull mum and dad. Maybe being grounded will give you time to think about our agreements. Even after you've pulled that all-important bloke, though, there's still plenty of work to do. This girl is in love! Definitely calls for a new outfit. <laughs> yes, Mackenzie and Co. even gives you your very own fashion show from which to choose your outfit. And with clothes like this, that could take you a very long time indeed. OK, you've got your bloke, you've chosen your threads, let's just hope he likes it. Hi. He's forgot his trousers. You look like a movie star. Wow. You did all this for me. You look incredible. You're the most beautiful girl I've ever seen. He's right, honey. You look fabulous. Come on. The stars await. Wimp. Good night, Mrs. Adams. Good night. Come on. Have a good time. <laughs> Play it right and it's top tongue sandwich action ahoy. And compared to every other game on the planet, Mackenzie & Co is quite good as it happens. And on Games Master, we quite literally cannot wait to play the finished version. Coming up in part two, top unusual challenge action in Mortal Kombat 3 on the PlayStation. So while I take a quick toilet break, make room in your hearts for these fantastic advertisements. Welcome back. Mortal Kombat 3 on the PlayStation has what's called a six-month exclusivity window. This means if you bought a copy now and stood in the street waving it like a madman, six months later some bloke would come along doing the same with the Saturn version. So let's go over to Rick and Dave to find out if those six months would be full of gay joy.
The latest Mortal Kombat outing hits the stores next month, with seven new characters as well as the return of Sonya and Kano, plus the added bonus of animalities and combos. PlayStation Power means combat-crazed boy men can expect a near-perfect conversion of the arcade game, but haven't we seen it all before? There's codes in there, and there's now animalities, which were always rumoured rumored to have been in the previous game. But I'm not sure that this really adds anything to the genre. And with games like Tekken and the new 3D environments to fight in, I think Mortal Kombat may actually have had its day. OK, it's not a great improvement over Mortal Kombat 2, but hey, we haven't seen a Mortal Kombat game on a PlayStation ever. It's got huge and very speedy graphics. It's also got code words. It'll give you extra characters. It'll give everything you ever want from a Mortal Kombat game and more. I hope this is the last one, but it's certainly a good way to go out. It's certainly monster, and I'm going to be playing it. I know you're going to be playing it. All I'm saying is, don't expect too much. Top finger pointing action, Dave. Finish him. The Super NES and Mega Drive versions seen here prove that you don't need 32-bit consoles to pull off the kind of death move that other computer game shows are too cack to show. The most bizarre carriage in the MK Gravy Train, though, is the stage show, hitting the road in America this month. Call me cynical and witty, but I can't help thinking this is a tragic way to waste an evening. Also imminent in the States is Mortal Kombat The Cartoon, a straight-to-video 60-minute disaster incorporating a dubious mixture of traditional animation and computer-rendered sequences. A warrior. In every generation, a few are chosen to prove it. They will travel to a mystical land to fight for their honor. Yes, the Mortal Kombat phenomenon might be three years old, but it shows little sign of putting a blanket over its knees, settling down with a nice hot cup of cocoa, and slipping gently into incontinent retirement. And after all that, it would be ever so slightly fair of us if we did not now proceed to play the blessed thing. So for some top Mortal Kombat 3 challenge setting action, it's over to Games Master. I sense that beating up the computer-controlled characters when you play the game in one player mode, isn't as easy as it used to be. So my challenge today is for a contestant to win a best of three round fight against the computer with the difficulty set to hard. It would be nice to see combos and the new finishing moves, but um, I'll accept a straight win. So to play Mortal Kombat 3, please welcome another young man with a short haircut, Mark Taus. <laughs> You're aptly suited to this. You are all formats national games playing champion That's right, yeah. and a bit of a martial arts expert. Oh, I do have a fantastic pair of nunchucks, Dominic. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you do. And also a big uh, game show fan. Oh, I do like appearing on game shows. So far to date, I haven't done too well. I was the first person out on 15 to 1 and uh, have the third lowest ever score on catchword to my name, which is not really something to boast about. But you did get to meet William G. Stewart. Oh, it was the highlight of my life, Dominic. The Second to meeting you, of course. The hardest man in television, William G. Stewart. Mm, so I've heard. Good job I didn't get on the wrong side of him. That's true. Very violent man as well, if you upset him. Mm. Oh, you don't want to see him glaring at you while you're stood up there in the podium. And you don't want to see his nunchuckers either. Absolutely not. I'll bet. <laughs> OK, right, Mark, so you know the score. It's very simple. Mortal Kombat 3, if you'd like to sit yourself down and get ready to play. Young shot is Mark Taus is about to try Mortal Kombat 3. Help me out is Dave Perry, who we're going to call Skipper today, I think, Dave. Yeah, that's uh, fine. Right, well, he's playing Sub-Zero in this first bout, so tell us, what's the new move Sub-Zero has in Mortal Kombat 3? Well, in Mortal Kombat 3, Sub-Zero has two notable new moves. One is the Ice Shower, which he can bring down upon his opponent, and he has an Ice Clone move, which allows him to make a freezing replica of himself, which, if his opponent touches it, it will freeze him. Thanks, Dave. We'll look out for those two. Right, best of luck, Mark. It's very, very simple. Win the bout. Fight. OK, so off we go. Mark is Sub-Zero on the left-hand side. You can see his energy bar in the top left-hand corner of the screen. He's playing against Jax, controlled by the computer, whose energy bar is in the top right-hand corner of the screen. Dave? Immediately, we're seeing some combos from Mark. It's worth remembering in Mortal Kombat 3. The difference between that and the previous two games is that you can pull off these two five-hit combos. You can really do some damage. It was always a criticism with the first games. OK, you can see there's a lot of damage being done to the computer-controlled opponent, Jax. His energy is almost out. Sub-Zero takes the first bout. 1-0 to Mark. Off we go for round two. 
Yeah. A fantastic outfit Jacks is wearing there, Dave, as well. Bare chested but with arms. Very oh, nice. Well, they pulled his arms off and they gave him some, some metal appendages, which uh, apparently make him more powerful, but it must take him more time to do the polishing in the morning. It certainly does, and it's not doing a lot of help here because his energy is very low once it's not. more. Mark is awesome. Jax's energy is right down. This is going to finish it. Okay, are we going to see a death roof here? Hopefully, we'll see the backbreaker. Goes to goes it, there goes. Oh, he's just caught the pieces completely now, Jax, which means that Mark has won the challenge two bouts to nil, but that wasn't actually that good. And it's certainly not worth a joystick. So we're actually going to ask Mark to play it a little bit differently here. Mark, we do understand. We have spoken to your mum. She says you can play Mortal Kombat blindfold. Is this in fact correct? That is correct, Dominic. I won't even begin to ask you how you discovered this or even why. But you've never tried this on Mortal Kombat 3? Never. Ever? Not even for a laugh? Not yet, no. Okay, right, Mark, we're going to try it now. Angels, if you'd like to blindfold Mark, the first time ever on national television, someone attempting to play a video game completely blindfolded. Okay, Mark, is that blindfold comfortable? You wouldn't like Just that to move yeah. your mouth or anything, though? Okay, so this time Mark is going to play as Sector, but this time he'll be totally blind. So off goes Mark playing Sector now in the red body armour and red codpiece there. Good start from him, Dave. Very good start. He got in with the uppercut quickly and the missiles. This is what he's going to have to use. He's going to have to use his special moves. He's obviously not seeing where he is. He can't get involved in close contact. That is indeed. Indeed, Mark is as blind as blind can be. If we look at the energy bars at the top of the screen, we can see it's pretty even at this point. But Liu Kang is the worst off. The computer control character is the worst off. He's coming. He's evened it up now. He has now. Oh, no. He might take a piece oh, of Oh, he's in trouble. It's danger for Sector. Oh, and that is it. Uh, he's lost the first bite, but that proves he is actually blind, in case anyone was doubting there. Here we go on for round two. Once again, energy bars in the top left and right-hand corners of the screen. That proves the credibility of the challenge, doesn't it? Because uh, he's lost that first round after easily winning the other one. And okay. now he's doing better this round. He's got, he's got a couple of special moves. And there's the homing missile. It took his time finding Liu Kang. It certainly does. If we look at the energy bars, we can see Liu Kang is slightly more the worse for wear. Another fantastic uppercut there. Yeah, there's a straightforward missile. That wasn't a homing one. That Liu Kang jumped easily over the top of it. And again, what Mark is doing is using his uppercut move to find where he is in relevance to Liu Kang because he cannot see him. So will they naturally home in on him with the uppercut move? The uppercut move will go to exactly where he is. And he's won the second That's round. That's fantastic. It. He's tied it at one apiece. And now, because it's the final bout, just to make completely sure he can't see Angels, would you like to place this book of birds in front of his face? Fight. So off he goes, Dave. In the meantime, Mark's already started. He's not having any of that. He's taken the lead. He's uppercutted Liu Kang and tried a couple of missiles. There's a homing missile, catches Liu Kang oh, in the air. Oh, fantastic double uppercut Beautiful. homing missile combo there. This is a fantastic round from Mark. And remember, He's this doing man very is well. so blind. Liu Kang looks stunned. Liu Kang doesn't know what's going on. Mark's using this uppercut to find him every time. It's a perfect move oh, for this challenge. Oh, my sense of smell almost, Dave. Oh, he's missed him. Liu Kang's got a couple of punches there. Liu Kang's closing in. There's oh, another Liu uppercut. Liu Kang's energy's very low. We're nearly there. He could do it. Oh, no, Liu Kang gets an uppercut. Liu Kang's going to try and come back now. But he's in this danger for Liu Kang. Are oh, we going to see a blind okay, finishing finish move? Okay, finishing move. Run, run, run down. Get right close to him. Oh, he oh. doesn't manage to pull up the finishing move, but he still magnificently manages to beat the computer blindfold. Yeah. Uh, the uh, bigger buzz back, please. Thank you very much. Don't want to lose this, do we? Mark, that was absolutely fantastic. Mark Tows, how did you do that? If only I knew, Dominic, that was probably the most difficult thing that I've had to do in my life so far. Even more difficult than appearing on 15 to 1? Even more difficult than that, although only just. Well, thank you very much, Mark. You have been a worthy champion and a very original one. Ladies and gentlemen, the Gordon Joystick to Mark Tows. <laughs> Well, that's it. We're totally laughed out. No more time. Just remember, life is like a pair of pants. If you don't change it, it can start to smell. Bye-bye.